Hello everyone, Lefko here from RetroReviewRevolution.com, and today this is part two of the Open Pandora handheld system review. Right now we're going to be going over uh, four front ends or operating systems that you can get for the system. Uh, this one here is probably the most popular one, it is Mini Menu. Um, applications are organized two ways. One is through these tabs along the top, which you can control either via touch or via the left and right triggers. And uh, you'll also have these folders that organize certain uh, categories. So like in the graphics category here, we've got 2D, 3D, raster, vector, and then viewer. Um, you can hit select for options, which you can toggle menu icons. Uh, there's a shutdown menu, a configure menu. Uh, you can manage app categories. You can kind of like hide certain categories if you want. Rescan for applications, like if you swap out SD cards or something. Cache previews to SD now. Uh, that way the preview pane, which is right now this pane over here, uh, run a terminal or console, big thing for Linux, run another GUI, quit or select a skin. Uh, right now we're going to run another GUI. That's pretty well it for mini menu for the most part. Down here you see a uh, battery, uh, select for options, date, time, and whatnot. A basic menu, but it's probably the most popular one because really you don't need anything overly complicated if you just want to do some games or basic apps. So we're going to run another GUI here. Right now we're going to switch over to XFCE4. It's loading up right now. Just a few more moments. And there we go. Now we have instead a full Linux desktop where we have our home folder, file system trash, SDMC drives, our quick start guides, and then along the bottom here we have a almost like a start menu, which we can't really see on this camera here. There we go. <laughs> uh, you can run a program, run the terminal, file manager. All the apps are in mini menu are also accessible right through here. If you were to want to uh, load up an app, they're all right here. Switch GUI, uh, the Pound Store, which is where you can uh, download more applications. Uh, following along on the bottom of the screen. Uh, right here is where you can access all of your storage, applications, desktop, file system, and whatnot. Along the bottom, you have brightness control, audio. There's a menu right here where you can disable Wi-Fi, enable the full-size USB port in the back, enable Bluetooth, options for TV out, and then CPU speed, which uh, where you can actually set it anywhere like this model. Actually, I can't overclock the 1 gigahertz. Just to play it safe. I don't go higher than 900. Uh, battery power in the zero zero. Normally, I'll show you the remaining battery time. However, in this one right now, it's plugged into the wall outlet, so it says zero zero because it's charging. Uh, again, date and time, and you can also switch between desktop space if you want, which is a cool feature. Uh, minimize and restore everything. Uh, quick workspace switcher again there. That way you can have multiple desktops to work on if you want. Cool feature. Let's go ahead back into mini menu real quick. So we'll go into start, switch GUI, or I call it start, the Pandora button, whatever you want to call it. Go into mini menu. So the Pandora will swap over real quick. Now we're going to go over to the system tab real quick. Now you can run other operating systems that we will not be covering in this uh, video. This is just giving a brief demonstration of uh, what's out there right now. The two that we just showed you are default installed on the Pandora. 
Uh, these next two are not default installed, but they're really cool. Uh, first off, you may already see where I'm going here. We're going to tap our Android gingerbread and give our system a minute here. Type in a password. Hide the screen. <laughs> Not that matters if anyone out there gets my Pandora and figures out my password, good for them. <laughs> and we are launching Android. Uh, yeah, the Pandora can also run Android. Uh, Android is a kind of a system hog for the Pandora, but uh, it's great for certain apps that are unavailable for Pandora, but however, run on Android. Uh, the Android version is Gingerbread 2.3, as we are beginning to boot here. There we go, we see our Android desktop launching. Now I have Android installed on here for just a few things. Go ahead and click our menu icon there. I keep it on here for Netflix, which you can see there. Uh, a few streaming videos from like RetroWare TV, Cinemassacre, uh, you'll see Angry Joe up there, and for my Kindle books. Uh, there is no native Kindle app for Pandora or for uh, any version of Linux right now. Unless you want to use like a browser-based cloud reader. So, for me, the uh, best way to do any book reading on the Pandora is to load up Android and then load up the Kindle app. It does handle some games. Just uh, remember that Android is a uh, resource hog, more or less. You can play YouTube using this, which is a lot better than the YouTube apps available for Pandora right now. And like I said, it can handle some games. It just remember, this screen is not multi-touch. It uses a resistive touch screen. Very high quality resistive touch screen. It don't have multi-touch though, but it is very precise, which I like. So we're going to uh, leave this operating system now. So we'll go back into our menu. And uh, in this version, all you have to do is tap Kill Android. I like the little uh, sideways Android there. It's pretty ingenious. Then Android shuts down. And then we are right back into Mini Menu. Now there's one more I'm wanting to show before I leave here. And this one, again, is not installed by default. But it's one I really like. Uh, this is one mostly for a simulation nuts. And we'll scroll down. I have a crap ton of apps installed on here, so this will take a minute. I've actually downloaded over three quarters of the repository just trying stuff out. Very close. Very close. There we go. Panda FE. We're going to launch it real quick. Now, Panda FE, you have to take some time to set it up, but after you're done, it organizes all your games in the platform. So let's say we want to play something on the Nintendo. Let's say we want it to play one of the games in the Game Boy Advance. Uh, you can see it also has a list of the NES, Super Nintendo, N64, Game Boy. And, bam, there's a huge list of uh, Game Boy Advance games I've loaded up on here right now. Uh, hit the side button, you can actually select a new platform real quick and just quick jump to it if you want to. We won't mess with that though, we'll just back out. But let's say we want to play some Metroid. So we uh, find in here Metroid Zero Mission. Go ahead and launch it which apparently don't work with that particular emulator. Hmm. Oh, how embarrassing. Normally this works. <laughs> uh, there could be a configuration change from where I was buggering around earlier, but usually it launches the game after you select it. 
There we go. The NES ones are still where they're supposed to be. So, um, there's 10 Yard Fight. Of course, a classic football game. Then, uh, hitting. Um, the function button plus escape backs out into the main menu again. So we'll go into something a little different here, like the PlayStation. Let's see if that one loads real quick. There we go. It's booting up into Ace Combat 2. Which I really like the Ace Combat games in the PlayStation. I thought they were uh, really good for what they were. But anyway, yeah, that is uh, some of the front ends and operating systems you can run on the Pandora. Uh, all kinds of different stuff on there to check out. Hope you enjoyed this one. The uh, next video, we're going to be going over the multitude of emulators that are available for Pandora. And believe me, there's a crap ton of emulators available. But uh, I'll be going over just some of the major ones. I won't be going over all of them because doing that would take more than what I could do in a 10 or 15 minute video. But we'll be going over a good chunk of the emulators. So till then, this is Left Coast signing off. We'll see you next time.